Well, I'm here with Arthur Menzoid. He is the Managing Director at Accenture Strategy here at the Deal UK event in the Waldorf Hilton in London, center of business activity in Britain, and some are saying in the world as well, but we're talking about Brexit, and we're talking more specifically about post-Brexit and what landscape we're going to see. Arthur, what have you seen from a trend perspective in the past nine months with respect to deals, the UK, and the broader economy? Yeah. So, uh, first of all, I was actually surprised because after an initial shock um, that went through the, the economy, um, actually not much has changed. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we see a little bit of a slowdown in uh, M&A, but that is um, throughout Europe as a whole. Um, we see a bit more slowdown in, in the UK. Um, uh, I think the numbers are uh, kind of year on year down in all of, uh, in all of Europe is like 30% in the UK. We've seen, uh, I think, in some areas up to 70% mm -hmm. down. Um, but I'm actually surprised that m most people um, still do business as usual. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing then with respect to direct investment into the UK? Though? Has that changed? Um, so I, I talk to a lot of clients and obviously in preparation for this event and generally I also talk with them a little bit about um, macro and microeconomic climate. And obviously lots of people um, uh, see the investment if it's um, so obviously there's a lot of investment where you kind kind of create a hub into Europe and a hub mm -hmm. into the EU yeah. and that naturally especially from investors outside of the EU went to London because of culture because of language and lots of people became very hesitant here so um, there is a lot of deal making when it's targeted um, the UK market um, as a very attractive domestic big market. There's a lot of deal consideration when it uh, targets um, certain um, areas of industry where UK is specifically strong, uh, for instance, like pharma, for instance, like aerospace and defense where it is um, an insurance company, a bank, uh, looking for um, an EU hub um, or a European hub, um, they would naturally have gone to the UK. And nowadays, I think this is where, where they're a bit more hesitant. Well, that brings me nicely to the next question, because we could be days away from the formal triggering of Article 50. That's the process mm -hmm. that begins that two-year exit pulling away the, the sort of um, the, the wires and connectors mm -hmm. that bring the two the trading blocks together. Mm -hmm. Is that timing weighing on investor sentiment, do you think? Are we looking at a pause? Does it create more uncertainty? Or is it more of a manufactured concern, given that we have known this has been coming for several months? Uh, yes and no. Mm -hmm. So when, when I talk to most of the, of the people, they don't expect too much uncertainty anymore because um, nobody can really see uh, any big leverage that the, um, that Britain has to stay in the um, free market without accepting free movement of people. Um, this is something I think of kind of a political dilemma. We heard uh, this morning in, in the uh, plenary session, um, in the panel discussion, that obviously um, having UK outside of the EU free market actually will hurt lots of EU countries more than it would hurt the UK uh, potentially. But still, I don't think politically that we can expect to um, have that unless uh, the UK would give up um, the um, uh, their control of immigration. But that, I think, was the key promise and the key expectation of the Brexit vote. So I don't think politically they can do that. Um, so at the end, everybody is expecting um, th that Britain will end up outside of the, of the EU market. So there is not that much uncertainty. Obviously, the whole um, negotiation can drag along a little bit, and there can always be a lot of, of political events. So the clients that I'm talking with, they don't expect um, to take um, any kind of big decisions, but everybody has an expectation by now, um, which is uh, Britain falling back to uh, WTO um, rules in, in dealing with, with the EU. 
that's an interesting point because I think prior to the U.S. election, we could have looked at Canada's association with the United States within NAFTA and thought enormous amount of trade, the two most important trading partners, no political connections, and certainly no free flow of people. Uh, there are immigration barriers on either side. You could have put that as a model for the UK's relationship with the EU. However, post the election of President Donald Trump, who wants to disentangle some of NAFTA, perhaps jettison it entirely, and change the dynamics of trade deals all around the world, we don't really have a base from which to think about the future association. Mm. I wonder if that creates a level of uncertainty, even in the last few months, that didn't exist prior to early November. Um, I mean, it's, it's um, so I think many people um, always expect uh, uh, governments and administrations eventually um, doing the right thing after exhausting all other options. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, I mean, there is a lot of, of um, discussions right now and, and um, uh, a lot of posturing um, on, on many sides, but we need to see where, um, where it lands uh, in the end. And I don't really think that anybody will inflict, um, uh, will, will kind of ignore the reality and then inflict big wounds um, on, on their own um, economy and trade. I think if, if we look at um, um, uh, a trade deal and free movement of people, I think uh, probably the EU and UK first need to settle um, the, the, the Brexit. And I would expect thereafter um, there could be new negotiations. But I think when we, when we talk about the Brexit, you can't disentangle the free movement um, from, the, from the market. Arthur Monzo, thank you very much for your time. That's a perfect point to leave it on. Thank you. Mm.